almost excited to see today. What about you, young lady? Joe Rowling. Jo oh, oh yes. yes. It's Scotty doesn't know. Oh, Scotty doesn't know. <laughs> Interesting. Eminem. Chip, 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 chip. It's called a Stairmaster. Get on it and get skinny and get some trashy lingerie while you're at it. Because at the end of the day, all we're interested in is looks. So delicious. So delicious. But I ain't promiscuous. Uh, and the Oscar goes to Charlize Theron. <laughs> Can I just, I just want to feel it. Ooh. Oh, that's totally oh working. Guy pulls your hair and spanks you at the same time while he's doing you. Do you oh care? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Would you like that, or would you would you be opposed oh to it? God, please. I'm just trying to get a handle in case I ever please, do you. Please, now, come on. In case you ever... The year is now 2000 and Y2K didn't end the whole world. Shocker. Um, we all thought it actually would. I remember being 10 years old and my whole family was terrified of the one home computer bringing destruction. Like, genuinely. What happened instead was probably one of the most toxic decades to have ever existed in terms of, like, society. <laughs> you are so lucky to be watching a 32 year old lady because that means that I went from the age of 10 to 20 in the 2000s. So I had my formational years and went through school in it and I remember so many of the pop culture things that happened because of it. <laughs> and also all of the toxicity has just seeped into my little brain which has taken a lot of therapy to try and deal with. This is a time when social media platforms were really in their forming phases so it was absolutely the wild west when it comes to the internet. More people were getting computers in their homes, technology shrank from like being a big clunky computer which put most people in the western world had like one of in their homes and then shrinking down to like the size of a mobile phone like even the social media platform you're watching this on right now it was launched in order to be able to watch this infamous moment of poor janet jackson uh which uh for harriet has got a whole video on which i highly recommend i just recommend her channel in general Nothing quite like misogynoir to fuel an entire multi-billion dollar platform, eh? Sure, I mean like the first video is the elephant one that you've all seen, but the real reason was actually for dim titties. So yeah, that's the kind of like decade we're dealing with here. I was originally going to be making this one video, but this has to be a two-parter because I've I still have more to say and I've had to cut this down so much. So yes, next week there will be a part two to this. Do not worry, uh, there is more for me to cover. But of course, if there's anything that I've missed or you disagree with me, please comment down below. I would love the engagement. It'd be fantastic. Don't forget to also subscribe and like. Now, as this has taken quite a few months for me to work on, literally. So obviously, with me bringing up these sorts of things, I have a lot of trigger warnings for you. I don't even have specific timestamps because this is spanning far and wide, basically as far as the eye can see, except for that dark shadowy place over there. Heavy discussions of diet culture, fat phobia, and EDs, um, it wasn't a toxic decade for nothing. Homophobia, racism, ableism, addiction, depression, side self-harm, flagrantly bad fashion, the pop on your vegan Uggs, get your blue eyeshadow, straighten your hair to an absolute crisp, please remember to use heat protection spray, we've got that these days like we didn't have back then. Curl your hair so it actually forms the perfect ringlets because that was what we did back then too. Slather on all of that orange tan or go as pale as possible and perfect that smoky eyeliner for that wonderful emo look. Or even tease your hair. And yes, side parts are necessary. We are covering everything. <laughs> as much as one person can. It's chastity. She is white trash. Same as you. A woman, a man, even the office slut. No, not that I'm mentioning any names. Stacy. <laughs> slut. I'm going to get up at 10 and I'm going to have two glasses of wine at lunch every single day. Only prostitutes have two glasses of wine at lunch. Well then buy me a boa and drive me to Reno because I am open for business. I 
Slut shaming. Do you know what we loved back then is like a recurring theme from the 80s, 90s and basically forever ago. Um, and looks and slut shaming. They just go hand in hand in this beautiful misogyny mix. Attacking teenage girls or women who were, you know, sexually active or who wore particular kinds of makeup or who dressed a certain way could be interpreted as sexual. Then the world was free to attack you for whatever. This was prevalent in emo music, rock music, pop music, hip hop, R&B, rap music, movies, TV shows, and the culture in general. So long as you'd had some D in your life, and you didn't marry the man, um, because of course it, this was heteronormativity as well, it's entirely your fault for giving it up. For wanting pleasure. How dare you? Revenge prawn as we know it today was definitely not known back then. It was more of like this very victim blamey is very normal sort of mentality. Whether it was Pamela Anderson or Paris Hilton or Kim Kardashian, all of the women were shamed. So Paris fully went into hiding afterwards. She felt so incredibly overwhelmed. Um, but like her fame had grown beyond Nicole Riches and so she got invited to SNL by herself. And you know what Nicole did? Um, she hosted a watch party at her house of Paris's um, Charlie XCX tape for everyone to watch. Um, I mean, Paris has forgiven her now, but still, apparently they're friends. That's what I mean when I say, like, just how much. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the level that I'm on about with how okay it was for people to do this stuff. So do you know who loved Rex tapes? The internet and comedians. Oh yeah, you get to jerk off and then bully the woman. Oh, this is like 2000s peak. Yes, perfect goals. Granted this was around for forever ago, but since the joys and curse of the internet, it meant that it's a lot easier for people to actually have access to it and um, do all the terrible things from it. Like, most people at this point had a home computer or at least access to the internet through school or at work, and we I'm, a, I'm guessing it would be a little bit easier to crack those firewalls back then, you know, think about how far technology has come, right? We all know what famously happened to Pam and Tommy, I've got an entire video all about Pamela Anderson up here, but that was in the 90s. But then, in 2003, Paris's boyfriend actually wanted to be able to launch his own company, based entirely off putting their hex tape up there. The Red Light District video, which was a website built exclusively for things like this. Obviously, he was the one that leaked the tape. And the thing is that in interviews this always came up as well, like Piers Morgan, the gem that he is, you know. Actually <laughs> come in and say, I'm not a boy or girl anymore. What else can you say you're not? You know, if I identify now as anything, is, it, is, is anything fine? I mean, can it's... I be anything I want? Can I be an elephant? Can I, I literally, <laughs> literally say I'm now an elephant? And I... do I get afforded <laughs> elephant rights? Shut up, just shut up. He asked her, are you good in bed? I guess it's a rhetorical question because I watched the video this morning for research purposes and the answer is clearly affirmative. He said that her response was, blushing, gasps, but looks delighted. I'm pretty sure this tormented person that went into hiding wasn't exactly delighted with this. And this was in GQ magazine in 2006. Now, does Paris have a very racist past that she has not apologized for still? Yes. I have my own qualms with the mega rich and uh, racism and all the other issues. It doesn't take away from the fact that she was an absolute victim in this uh, situation. The thing is that Paris was a prime target to hit because she was a person that had done nothing to be famous. It's like famous for being famous, right? So no one felt any guilt at like throwing stones, everything at her. So you had every single comedian, this featured in South Park, this featured in so many things. And even still today, people know her more for like one night in Paris as opposed to everything else that she's done. That's just how damaging it is and it's been like nearly 20 years. Like I know that she got a bit more sympathy after the documentaries came out and there are people that really like her YouTube channel and stuff, but there's still this thing that absolutely hangs over her head. Paris Hilton, I would kill myself. She's like a she's, she's, of, she's she, a piece of shit. Yeah, she has no right what to be on that do? stage. That was, was, so... was every was, was everyone <laughs> I mean, super she resentful? She should be so grateful. Well, we came we, I think from being people were like, oh, maybe she'll be fun. You know, she won't take herself too seriously. She takes herself super seriously. Because she's yeah. dumb. She's so dumb. She's so proud of how dumb she is, and she's she looks like a tranny up close. Her hair. <laughs>
Now, Kim Kardashian does get accused of leaking the Rex tape that happened to her as well um, because it then led on to Keeping Up With The Kardashians, the show. Is this, by the way, the only thing that's keeping Ray J relevant these days? Because I haven't heard of him forever. Now, the tape did make it out there and apparently it settled for five million out of court. However, this has been disputed as well, so do not take that as fact. Now, I was actually trying to find her views on it, whether she would count this as being revenge prawn as well. Um, but then she was like, oh, well, I can't really say anything about it because her brother, Rob Kardashian, had actually put up naked pictures of um, his ex on Instagram and was in a lawsuit about it. So she's like, oh, anything that I say will make him feel like trash, so we can, we can basically put this into the revenge prawn category. I think that you understand why I'm saying that. I don't think that she purposefully leaked this because can you imagine, like, back then, she wasn't exactly well known, she had been Paris's assistant and friend, and she was selling clothes on from people that she'd styled the wardrobes of. So I don't really think that she would have been able to get a proper job, whatever people count as being anyway. Like, people don't think this is a proper job, but you know, like, whatever. Like, she didn't really have many options to go down. And because reality TV was such a huge thing back then, it's like, it was a no-brainer to go down that path. I'm, I'm gonna say it, Kim was actually lucky that her mum is such a momager to be able to manage the situation, to be able to get that sort of deal, and then now they've built a literal empire, which I completely disagree with, like... I've never even watched an episode, I don't really like Kim all that much, but I can definitely see like she was being absolutely exploited here. Doesn't make any of what happened there right. Doesn't make what she's going through at the moment right as well. Like I said, I'm just saying that a thing like this can absolutely ruin a person. I'm sure many of you have heard about 4chan. Now, this was launched in, what was it, 2003, and prom was getting more and more easily accessible by the masses. Now, what is a great way to be able to get back at an ex? To be posting their private intimate pictures that you possibly took together, possibly took just of them, and put it out for the world to be able to faff over, effectively. Um, great, great thing to do. Not at all falling into the revenge prawn category. They were the ones that were in the pictures, it was their own fault, right? Now, often this got labelled as being amateur. Now, I'm not saying that some of it wasn't actually amateur, but what I'm saying is there, there's enough issues around it because of the lack of traceability and the fact that it was not actually the women, because it was typically women putting this up themselves, it was their partners or their exes putting this up. And that's where I'm like, yeah. So nothing gets put on the man that did all of this stuff, the shame is on them. And if their pictures get discovered, their job prospects, their future partner prospects, everything is ruined because People just label them in, like, I've already got that whole video on the Madonna complex, like, people just label them as unworthy because they're used. Having a moment of intimacy and sharing something with a partner or partners or whomever, even if it's for yourself, should not be something that is, like, accessible for everyone unless you yourself consent to put it out there. And I don't believe that they're in for any of these people, okay? Great. People, like, legitimately considered any woman that had... Charlie XCX on camera, or had pictures taken of themselves, or dressed a certain way, or did their makeup in a certain way, particularly if you did your makeup like this, that you were a s that you were a s and that you were a terrible person, and just to be used and abused. People legitimately did not think that women that were like this deserved any sort of, like, respect. And they also really got broken down into being labelled as being stupid. There was a real vilification of women and girls at this point, um, where if you were doing this, you were considered to be anti-feminist as well, because you were leaning into feminine traits. Like, even in my high school, this happened to a girl, like, her video got shared around the place. I, I never saw it, I never wanted to see it. This girl, the abuse was so bad that she had to leave school because of a thing that a boy did. And if he had anything remotely to do with Charlie XCX work, you were treated like Monica Lewinsky was treated in the 90s, like an absolute social pariah. And I would be recommending you to watch Sydney Black's video as well, all about Monica Lewinsky too. The thing is that this is all despite people being told repeatedly, Victoria's Secret models are what everyone is meant to be aiming to look like. You're meant to look like that, you're meant to dress like that, you're meant to embody all of this good stuff good stuff, male gaze stuff, um, but then acting on it, oh no, 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 sweetie. Like, do you remember the feud between Christina and Britney, um, when it was actually just slut-shaming Christina for looking and acting a certain way, and trying to 
keep the pristine image of Britney very much alive, even though Justin completely ruined it. <coughs> I have some problems with him. Good morals mean waiting to have sex until after you've been married. I would definitely agree with her on that. Okay. Did you and she live up to this during your relationship? Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay, I asked it, you answered, right? There you go. We both did our job. There you go. <laughs> I really do side-eye that man. Like, I do not care how much of a bot Crimea River is. Yes, I'll still listen to it. But mostly that was because of Timberland's involvement, let's be honest with you. And we could say a lot about Justin's, um exploitation of black media to be able to make his music cooler um but for harry it's already got a whole video all about the justin situation and the super bowl situation everything's always linked down below but the thing is like after their breakup like the slut shaming got so bad for britney they definitely contributed to her breakdown um so that's great good work noodle head at this time, paparazzi purposefully did upskirt shots of like people getting out of cars and stuff like that was so common. And then they plastered them all over the front page and people would just label the, the girls, the women, um, as being sluts at this point. As opposed to like reflecting backly on the photographers that were purposely getting on the ground so they could get that shot. There was accusations from men, women, every single gender out there that these women were actually doing it for attention as opposed to being victims. Like, when I say that the mentality was really against women, I truly mean it. Even Amy Poehler, someone that I really do like, as I said in my Galentine's video, she made jokes at their expense saying, nobody wants to see your baby factory. Best and worst dress lists were littered with people being called too slutty. And it also ruined entire reputations like what happened to Megan Fox. Um, one, she was underage when people were cheery about all of that stuff, which is utterly revolting. Um, um, she's 15, so you can't sit her at the bar and she can't have a drink in her hand. So his solution to that problem was to then have me dancing underneath a waterfall getting soaking wet. And that's... <laughs> Perfectly wholesome. At 15, I was in 10th grade, so that's, <laughs> wow. that's sort of a microcosm of how Bay's mind works. It, yeah, well, yeah, well, that's really a microcosm of how all our minds work, but uh, some, okay. some of us have the decency. But then also it ruined Jennifer's body because it got marketed as being a sexy movie as opposed to the horror movie it actually is. It's very creepy. I, I watched it once and I was like, oh God, because I thought it was something different. Of course I did, because of how it was advertised. Um, I would also be recommending Amanda the Jedi's video on it, and also watch this video from Rowan Ellis as well. Fantastic breakdowns of the situation, if you are not aware of it already. Oh yeah, daddy issues were even more of a sickening joke back then, like, these days now we're actually sort of realising in an objective way, oh, it was actually the men's failing, as opposed to, like, blaming the women for being the victims of it, but not even victimising them. It's like, oh yeah, of course, like, they'll do X, Y, Z because they've got daddy issues, and daddy issues is always used as an insult against women at Rose. It's meant to be going up to them because they're the ones that cause the problem. <sighs> but you know, like, did TV know that? No. So you've got things like Desperate Housewives, How I Met Your Mother, the whole thing. Um, the Simpsons, South Park. Basically, every single TV show that was popular then, there was a daddy issues uh, joke thrown in there as well. I could truly go on for days about this, but let's move on to the next thing. Oh, she's got glasses and a ponytail. Oh, look at that. She's got paint on her overalls. What is that? Yeah, thanks. You too. And by the way, bloaty is not a word. There's bloated, there's bloating, but no bloat. Thanks. It's fascinating. Well, for you, how ice is made is probably fascinating. See ya. So I did everything possible to put distance between myself yesterday and the present. Not that an in log will be reading this book, um, and plus, that's why I was able to read that. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about in logs. Now, obviously, we all know now, um, even though some apparently don't, that categorizing women is like wrong in any case, like no matter what. It's just BS, and it's generally completely unhelpful, okay? Great. So, we've got everyone's favorite in logs of Hermione Granger, who literally was not like the other girls that she went to school with. And then you have Bella Swan as represented in film. Um, cue the blue cast over this. And the great soundtrack. Like, that's the one thing I'll give that movie, even though I was bored to tears watching it. I think we even walked out. So bad. Sorry. I'm, I'm not. I even watched it as a teenager, I didn't enjoy it, I'm sorry, okay, what what can I say? But I do recognise the fact that we lost our faith in men enough to actually uh, create our own, which were possibly even more predatory, uh, considering the age of them. But, you know, 
I do understand being sick of them enough to make them up. Including all of the fanfiction online, Wattpad, everything else. Ugh. Another joy that 2000s brought. So you've got Bella Swan, which kind of fit into the everyman trope, but for girls. You know how like, she didn't like girly things and feminine stuff and she just felt uncomfortable and awkward all the time. Um, and all of the boys at school were fawning over her and the other girls were made to seem like stupid and frivolous because they actually liked makeup. I mean, honestly, you can really hate on those movies a lot, um, but if you watch them as a horror, I fully get it a lot more. Uh, there were definitely a few toxic takeaways from the whole, like, beastly man sort of trope then. I mean, like, at least in Beauty and the Beast, like, he kind of changed, right? And the age was actually appropriate. But you know, like, it's for teen girls. It's wish fulfillment for teen girls, and it's like, we shouldn't really go throwing shade at that sort of stuff, like, whatever. The issue was, was this did really bring about like a lot of the analog sort of workings that you then got into like the 2010s with all of the memes about it and stuff like oh my gosh a blonde picked up a book and then she turned to a brunette wow we're so smart okay <laughs> And that brings me to the other kind of analog, <laughs> musical proliferation. Now going against gender norms and acting and dressing and looking however way you want, totally here for it. Yes, that is empowering. But bringing down other women and girls in order to be able to seem more worthy, yeah, we're not really here for that. Welcome to the musical proliferation of analogs and um, the very vast world that it actually encompasses. Now look. I can't go acting like a saint here. I fully did this too, 100%. My self-esteem was so low you could like not even scrape me off the floor with how low my self-esteem was as a teenager. Now, you may remember this music video where Pink accidentally fell into this trope as well because it definitely is a trope. It's not as empowering as was originally intended because the on the nose messaging was so on the nose that it got known as being, well, today the end log song, but back then the fact that she was completely against Femininity. <laughs> there is a definite difference between having to act a certain way and actually enjoying doing certain activities, you know, and it was all of the feminine things were again slammed time and time again and it's like, some people actually don't want to be president, some people actually don't want to dance next to 50 Cent, just gonna say. <laughs> Like, as opposed to attacking the systemic issues of patriarchy, yet you attack other women, as what happened in that, including what she did to Paris Hilton, um, because she parodied the um, Charlie XCX tape that we now know, as I talked about before, um, caused her massive trauma. So that's not really what we're after, right? <laughs> Honestly, so many songs were all about this. Basically, I sadly have to say, a lot of the female kind of like rock sort of angled stuff was based around this. Actually, a lot of just female made music was around this because this is what we've been raised in was attacking each other, which doesn't do anything. You meant to attack the thing up there, like the overall thing, but that was harder to do. But of course this wasn't just women that were doing this, this was by men as well. Um, particularly sadly in the rock genre, as sad as it is for me to say. You've got Panic at the Disco, uh, I Write Sins Not Tragedies, even though still on our mini moon we were singing along to that song in the car. <laughs> Say what you will, it's still a bop. It was really prevalent across the entire decade. Now I'm not trying to say that cheating songs were like a specific thing for them, but it was specifically done in such a way where it was 
women shaming typically <laughs> like you did actually have some teens who were like making music in their garage you may have heard of this myspace band called the millionaires um who were actually embracing the fact that they wanted to act in a completely different way and they weren't happy with their sexuality they were drinking i know the whole underage drinking whatever stuff um but they were actually making music about all of this rebellious stuff that they really enjoyed um and they got put on tours with music that did not like go well with them at all and then you had all of these men hating the girls as well because they were comfortable in themselves they were almost ahead of their time and it's also funny because um you can actually hear similarities in the music um and then it's almost like Kesha's manager kind of stole what they were doing <laughs> Feeling like P. And of course, all of this is more reasoning why Legally Blonde is my favourite movie from the 2000s, uh, because sadly still a lot of those messages really do carry true today. <laughs> I really do hate the way that uh, gay people are portrayed in it though, I must say. That cicada right outside my room though, can you stop? I close my windows and everything. As someone who was a pick me for the longest time and thought that anything feminine was a terrible thing because of the household I grew up in and because of like all of the messaging everywhere. Ah, femininity, bad. Confession, I only saw Legally Blonde in 2006 and I was fully against the main character until, oh my goodness, I had an epiphany at the age of 16. <laughs> Yeah, that, um, hey, guess what? People are full people. Wow. 16. And long splut shaming in music was so popular at the time and very sadly influential. I just think you guys would be really hot. You girls are 18, right? I am. I will be in a month. Really? You ever been photographed? Yeah. Countdown clocks. <laughs> yes. I've talked about this in the past, but I've got to say the 2000s really brought about this in a big way, shall we say. You know how the internet kind of transformed from being a clunky single like home computer to like literally being in the palm of your hand obviously not like this but you know like a watered down version of it that you could like access on your hand um with <laughs> I'm manix is licking my leg he just came up to me and was like <laughs> i mean like sure it wasn't a great internet connection but it was still a connection and you could still get pictures on it and that that was what was important right so if you do not know what a countdown clock is, let me just ruin your life for a second. It's basically a time where a uh, typically female celebrity goes to being 18. And so, yeah. So think about it, you've got Emma Watson, Lindsay Lohan, Amanda Bynes, Megan Fox and Miley Cyrus. Basically any child or teenager that had had any time on screen, um, people were counting down until it was okay to factor them. And of course they were eagerly awaiting their more stripped down adult version. I can't believe I just had to say that sentence. So like this absolutely happened with Britney, like I don't know if you recognize this very famous Rolling Stones cover with all of the kitty stuff around it and like she embraced like dancing how she wanted, looking how she wanted, like she did things that she felt sexy in and that's absolutely fine but the way that people were like constantly prying about her virginity, constantly prying about like every possible little thing that could have possibly happened to her or she could have done with Justin. Um, it was really particularly gross for Britney. There were whole websites about this and of course like people were gathered together on forums to talk about it and share pictures and all that gross stuff. But because of events like this happening, to me there was absolutely no surprise with the fact that there was this huge leak of a whole bunch of female celebrities and some male celebrities as well in the year 2014. You may recall this event called The Fappening. Very witty, well done, where basically a whole bunch of like celebrities' pictures, like private pictures, naked pics um, and stuff were leaked from the cloud um, and so everyone was just like flocking to look at them. Obviously I didn't, I haven't watched any of that stuff or looked at any of it because I don't want to because obviously <laughs> consent matters. But also unsurprisingly all of the five people that orchestrated this were men, one of whom was actually specifically targeting underage girls including his sister-in-law. Those are the kinds of people we're dealing with here. You'll be glad to know justice was sort of served. They all served, or well, most of them served, a little bit of time in jail, like around about like about 18 to 24 months. 
totally justice. Huh, yeah. Now, like I said, like, revenge porn wasn't really considered to be a thing back then. This is definitely when the women were still being shamed for taking those pictures to begin with, and this was in 2014. So you can imagine in the 2000s, with all that I've been telling you, so, so much, like, so much worse. My hairline is so weird. My pores are huge. My nail beds suck. So you know what's really important in the 2000s? Controlling women's bodies. Like, so pinnacally important. Like, I've already talked about this in my rom-coms video, if you haven't seen that yet. Um, <laughs> hi. Welcome to my channel. The 2000s was kind of like pink diet culture. And, of course, like I said before, this is when I had my formative years, so fun. It's been a lot of fun for my brain. Getting by on as few calories as possible was seen as like a sign of strength, a sign of feminine resilience and worthiness effectively. Seeing how much your low-rise jeans could show off like your hip bones jutting out? <laughs> Peak. Oh, if you had very um, angular and visible shoulder blades? Oh, desirable. Especially if you could see the vertebrae very visibly all the way. <laughs> yes. Oh, but also make sure you've got some boobs and a tan. Very important. Like, we had the 90s wave continuation. Like, but you were normally expected to have a spray tan and be like, toned, as opposed to just the way that it looked in the 90s. And there was also this push for this more voluptuous look, who also often got called fat as well. like you get the picture right like that they're, they're all still incredibly slim but like all of these had like a little bit of curve but mostly in the bust area was it more focused on oh and of course you have to chuck in all of the playboy girls into this too but the diversity thing like <laughs> there is it's quite a white focus you could say and then the exoticism um sort of pushed towards the curvy girls um yeah you you know, you know the problematic things that are going on here, right? And found himself an exotic Latina. What did my son had been that lucky? We were lucky with like a couple of dark skinned black women, but like there was only one Gabrielle Union, right? And normally it was more of the fetishizing of people too. This especially happened to poor um, Lucy Lou. Like, my God, I felt so sorry for her. How was so much control made over their bodies? Like, Funnily enough, mostly internalized misogyny, women policing women, it was rife. If you think it's bad today, it was worse then, and that was without, like, the internet as easily accessible on your phones. And there was this definite glorification of competition over men. Now, the Victoria's Secret fashion show was a big part of this, which I've styled my makeup from today, and um, I've tried with the curls, I really have, I've tried with the volume. <laughs> now, whilst the fashion show started in 1995, like, it got bigger and bigger each year, and it kind of became, like, this big event. I remember everyone would be talking about it, and it would just cover the news all the time, and the costumes, like, the outer of them got bigger, but the models got skinnier and tanner, <laughs> and the clothing got smaller, and the boobs got more pushed up. <laughs> Alessandra Ambrosio, Heidi Klum, Adriana Lima, Giselle Bunchen, Miranda Kerr, Dutz and Crows, um, who I desperately wanted to look like, still do, I wish I had her nose. Salita Ebanks, Isabel Goulart, Marissa Miller, like these are all of the people that I remember being really, really big back then. Like these are all the people I remember being like, pinned on people's walls it's like inspo you know all of them are gorgeous stunning women honestly i've got zero against them i've got an issue with the way that um people were meant to look like them when even they would say themselves like it takes a lot of work to look the way that they did it basically took up a full-time job because their looks were literally their like way of income <laughs> and the training that they went through was intense i've seen people on youtube try and like keep up with it it's, it's an awful lot <laughs> It was a little bit like how feminism was in the 90s, but you had to crank the sexy up more. I don't know how else to really put it, because you're expected to be able to have it all, cook dinner, have that ready for your partner, husband, boyfriend, whatever. Um, even if you were single and having it all, you still were expected to make sure your house looked perfect, that you looked perfect all the time, that you could walk in like the four inch stilettos everywhere, and that you always looked perfectly manicured and coiffed and everything. Like, I definitely fell into this trap and I spent many years <laughs> beating myself up over it. Like, like, if I had a chip nail, I would panic. If I had to go get groceries, I had to put on a full face of makeup before being able to go get groceries. Like, it was 
a huge thing. Even if it was like one thing from the supermarket, I was like, I can't leave the house looking like this. That's how internalized it became for me. Um, again, like I said, this is my formative years, but I know that I was not alone with it, like feeling like this from what I was seeing from other people online. Like it even got to the point where um, it was so bad because I was exercising so much and really trying to control my eating that I collapsed and ended up in hospital <laughs> because of a misdiagnosed heart condition that was diagnosed as anxiety when I was 13, um, but it was more. <laughs> So everything. <laughs> like you had the tabloids that were absolutely rife with diet tips, slim fast ads were everywhere, Jenny Craig was everywhere, every single possible diet under the sun, but in particular Atkins had a really strong hold over people like carbs were the absolute devil, which is why it gets referenced in the holiday. You know what I really want to do? I, I want to eat carbs without wanting to kill myself. But you also had now had the internet and you had internet forums really leading into this as well too because Tumblr, I don't know if you know, but that came about in 2007. But now Photoshop was absolutely everywhere and you were constantly bombarded with these images of perfection where it wasn't quite as bad in the 90s because like you still had like some cool grunge aesthetic but now it just got cranked way up. Like it was inescapable and also because we didn't have such good media literacy back then people actually thought that people could look like that. Like I said before with the internet you already had pro Anna chat rooms but Tumblr kind of gave a place for everyone to be able to go and flock and if you knew the right search terms then you could find your community and get all the tips. I do just really want to quickly say that because Tumblr was so aesthetically driven as well, it was incredibly dangerous for people who were already vulnerable because of particularly shows like Skins, where people would romanticize this way of life and um, it was very dangerous and it only increased into the 2010s. So that's why I really wanted to point out Tumblr is like a really big cause of a lot of EDs. I know that people are trying to say that now you've got that girl aesthetic and all of that stuff. Like I would still say this is more like girl boss mixed with like a bit of a healthy version of like wanting to lead a healthy Gwyneth Paltrow life because most of these girls are typically blonde and white as well. Um, I know who's talking here, I fully get it. But it's more on that angle as opposed to appeasing men, which it was solely about in the 2000s. Like, the male view of everything was so strong. Like, you looked through, like, would a guy think this is cute? Like, guys' opinions were so very important. Whereas now you actually value women's opinions more. I mean, I know that there's still a lot of internalized misogyny that happens and there's this whole issue with the BBL movement and everyone, even people I wouldn't expect, getting plastic surgery, whether it's invasive or non-invasive procedures. There's a whole other thing happening right now um, with more people getting plastic surgery, but back then it wasn't as easily accessible because the costs were still very high in the 2000s. So people were doing the classic no carbs, tanning beds, um, and doing a lot of cardio. Cardio was like the thing, unless you were doing yoga as well because appropriating that as well. <laughs> like Kate Winslet and Drew Barrymore were labelled as being fat and they were both paired in movies against Cameron Diaz and definitely labelled as being the less desirable one because everyone of course would want the Cameron Diaz as opposed to these two. Like the thing is that they've all got different body shapes and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I don't, please don't think that I'm trying to shame Cameron Diaz for the fact that she's naturally got like that figure because why? And we even had Susanna who was the fat aside Trini. Even though like they even, I remember this episode because they both weighed themselves and they weighed the same but everyone still viewed Susanna as being the fat one. Like this is the culture <laughs> that we were raised in. Like, and their entire show was about how people had to hide their fat and look sexy and do all of this stuff which really appeased the male gaze and I've got a whole video I really want to make on them because I used to take their books with me to the retail jobs that I had and I'd be like, okay, so these are your colours and this is what works for your body shape, like all of that stuff. I'm okay with empowering women with doing things like that, but... The fact that most of it was actually down to internalized misogyny just kind of makes my brain go wild. Like ultimately this decade actually brought about more body checking and body shaming than what really even happened before. And the thing is, public shaming was so normalized because everybody was getting attacked because of the edgy humor that was so groundbreaking back then with this honesty. <laughs> so yes, Trini and Susanna, they kind of paved the way for 
all sorts of people to try and become personal stylists and then bought $500 worth of clothes from places where I worked at and then the people came back trying to return them crying. Um, yeah, I remember all of this. What do you think? Uh, not bad. Just, I don't want to be perceived as a bimbo. I mean, and I don't want you to be a bimbo. You have to be two people: the saint and the sinner, the librarian and the stripper. I'm gonna take this and this and give you a princess. Andrea's swan plan will include several procedures starting with her face. She'll have CO2 laser treatment, extensive dermatology, a nose job, a brow lift, fat removal from her cheeks and chin, fat transfer to her lips and LASIK eye surgery. For her body, she'll have breast augmentation and liposuction in four different areas. At the dentist, Andrea will have zoom bleaching, da Vinci veneers, gum tissue recontouring and deep cleaning, for her extensive decay, she'll have a root canal and tooth extraction. For her fitness transformation, Andrea will be put on a 1300 calorie a day diet and will spend over 120 hours in the gym. She will also undergo therapy and coaching to build self-esteem and learn how to control her emotional outbursts. We had the joys and horrors with the fact that reality TV had such a strong grip on people that you, yes, even ugly Joe, you and me, could go on these reality shows and be transformed into this beautiful butterfly of the male gaze. I feel completely unbearably disgusted with myself. Like you could go on boot camp shows, you could go on The Biggest Loser, you could end up on Trini and Susanna, you could end up on Gok, you could end up on all sorts of things to just make you feel worse than what you actually already felt. <laughs> like people would actually call them up or people would call them up or submit letters to say my friend needs to go on this show. Like that was a really big thing about these reality shows, it's just oh they need a lot of help, like they've been single for ages, it's embarrassing going out with them. Like. That's the kind of level of like people being okay with publicly shaming others. Like when I say it was prevalent, it was everywhere. I don't, if you grew up in this time, I'm sure that you remember it now and I'm sure that me saying this stuff is triggering these memories, but it was really about this major attacking culture on not only the celebrities that people wanted to take down a peg, but everyone like the show that i really wanted to go on was the swan i thought that the swan was the best because i remember watching that when i was back in the uk so i must have been like what 13 14 and the thing is that they made plastic surgery look so easy and they really minimized the pain and even so it was worth it because like that grand reveal and everyone be like oh my gosh they look amazing they're so beautiful now or you could go on the biggest loser and get pushed to the point of literally vomiting or having to go to hospital in order to lose weight and unhealthy a very unhealthy way in a very unhealthy amount of time. Jordan Teresa's already got a fantastic video all on this, but like the reality TV um, makeover shows were very damaging and toxic. Let's talk about your diet. Okay. You lost one pound. Mm. You weigh 138. No. I came here weighing like 145. I'm gonna weigh in at 139. 145. 139. I think I look pretty damn good, and as soon as I tone up, I'm gonna be smoking. People have been trying to weigh you, and you have a fit. No, I don't wanna no, be no, weighed. No. I don't understand why it's such a big deal that I don't wanna weigh in right at this moment. I'm running off more than enough to go down and get on the scale, but right now, I just want to be left alone. No, I haven't. Oh, yeah, you yeah. have. How about in the gym? You've been complaining in the gym. That's a damn lie. I've been working my ass off at the gym. Andrea comes into the gym and constantly complains. She needs to turn her attitude around if she even has a chance at making it to the pageant. I'm not making up excuses. I just want to go home. And then he also had America's Next Top Model, which would take average girls off the street and do the infamous makeover on them, where they often just chopped off like their beloved hair or like dyed it terribly or I cannot forgive this Lego person haircut that they gave to this poor girl. 
what the hell like i know that so many people have already covered america's next top model and i won't go in depth into it here but like these girls were attacked all the time for like oh you got a bit of a pudge there oh you need to tighten that up or if you're a plus size model you need to start looking like it <laughs> you need to act with confidence even though we've spent the past like hour berating you for how ugly you look telling people in as many ways as they could of how they didn't know their angles well enough and how ugly they actually were and just you need to have more confidence meanwhile just attacking them all the time um yeah meanwhile their plus size was me at my thinnest and also can i just raise that they gave this girl a literal tooth gap she had this tiny gap between her teeth to begin with and then they made her go to a dentist who shaved off more of her teeth to give her a more pronounced gap that was that show. So when I say that makeover shows have really taken a storm, I mean, you obviously had it in movies as well. Like you've got Princess Diaries, you've got basically any movie that was aimed at females included like some sort of makeover scene. I've already referenced Mina Lay so many times, but I will still up there. The video is like a year old at this point. The 2000s was very much about conformity of outward beauty and you had to know everything that suited you according to what men wanted you to look like. Where you could have just the right amount of tucking and plucking and like the right kind of makeup, the right kind of hair. Like these roots, I would be absolutely shamed to death because of them. Like you weren't allowed to look fake, but you're also expected to look like one of the Victoria's Angels models. Well, that is it for today. I know that this has been incredibly long and thank you very much for your patience. The next video will be coming out next week. And like I said, I've got way more to talk about. If you disagree with me or need to correct me on something, always feel free to comment down below. Um, and if you made it all the way to the end, what was your favorite movie from the 2000s? Just 2000 to 2010. I'm allowing that full gap there, including the 2010. Um, for me, it would definitely be Legally Blonde because of the cultural impact of it and the fact it mostly still stands up except for the gay joke. This is probably going to be three hours of footage that I need to edit down to one hour. Let's see if I've managed to do it. Who knows? It's a mystery for us all.